Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about installing Mountain Lion and doing a clean install. And then from there we'll talk about how to install Mountain Lion Server as well. Now in my previous screencast I talked about the fact that uh, of a way that you can take the installer and make sure that you save it and put it on a USB stick so that you can access it later. And so what happens is it saves it as a disk image and when you do that and you launch the disk image this is what you see. And so as you can see you can do it right, you don't even have to create a fancy disk image, you can go right from here and you can double click the install mountain lion and then the installer comes up just like we talked about before. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a clean install on, uh, on a drive that I've got attached to my computer here. So what will happen is I'll walk you through that process as best I can. And there will be some times when uh, obviously I won't have my screencast software going, but I'll show you how a clean install works and we'll get things rolling and set up. So again, this is the Mountain Lion install screen. You just click continue. You agree to the terms uh, that, are, that they put out there and then you want to find the, d the drive that you want to install it on. Now I want to install it on an external drive so I'm going to show all drives and I've got this uh, USB drive here called Air Disk. I'm going to put it on that and I'm, going to I'm just going to click install here. It's going to ask me for my credentials to make sure I really want to do this and install it on that external disk and now it's going to go about the process of preparing to uh, install. It's going to gather all of the data from the internet and then it's going to automatically restart my computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here, let it do its thing, and when it's done restarting uh, we will see what the install process looks like from there. Okay, so once the computer is restarted now we get the standard install uh, OS 10 screen, so it's installing it right now. It's going to take a little while to do that, as you can see about 17 minutes or so. When it's done with this uh, install process we should have a uh, finished installing screen and so I'll come back and show you what it looks like when we get to that point. Okay as you can see the install succeeded it says it was installed on my uh, air disk it says the computer is going to restart in a couple seconds and so here goes the uh, restart process and so now my computer is going to restart and hopefully it should uh, boot into the setup process and setup program so that I can set up the uh, the different services and things on my brand new Mountain Lion installation and you can see the apples come up there we're gonna let this thing uh, spin a little bit and uh, hopefully in a few seconds here it's going to take me into the various screens to walk me through setting up my Mac uh, just as if it was a brand new Macintosh and in some ways it really is because this was a clean install that we did and uh, and so it is a new Mac install and so few seconds here it should come up and should launch us right into the entire install process so as I'm uh, walking through this here pretty soon it'll come up and when it does I'll walk you through the process. okay as I said before um, I'm doing this on my video camera so here's the basic welcome screen right it says you know what uh, where are you located I'm in the United States so I'm just gonna click continue uh, keyboard I'm using a US style keyboard so continue on that now it has Wi-Fi networks, so it shows the various Wi-Fi networks that are available, and so I can log into my Wi-Fi network, and that way everything's set up. So you select it, punch in the password. Sorry for the finger hands there; uh, it's just the way the camera is. So you can see that I'm actually recording this on an external camera. So let me type my password in. Okay, I'm going to click uh, do that. Let's see, I didn't get it right here, so let me type it again. Make sure I get this accurate, so that it'll take and then I'm going to click uh, continue and so now it's going to connect me to my Wi-Fi network and now it asks me if I want to transfer information to this Mac well I'm not going to do that it's a clean install so I'm just going to click continue to go to the next section because I don't need to transfer anything now I can enable location services right which allows the different devices and different services to know where I am on my Mac so that it can customize different services and things to me I'm going to enable that because uh, that's a good service I'm going to click continue now you put in your Apple ID and your Apple ID then will set up uh, your uh, your iCloud account and get those things going and so what you want to do is put in whatever your Apple ID is and your uh, password so let me type that in here again sorry for the fingers but uh, it's just the angle that I've got of the camera and I'm gonna click continue and it's gonna configure it okay so it looks like I had an incorrect Apple ID or password let me see if I need to I think I need to put the uh, at sign on the end here 
Not sure uh, what that is. Let me retype the password just to be safe. And put that info in there. And then I'm going to click uh, Return Continue. So now there we go. It took that and set that up. So now uh, on my Apple ID, it wants me to put in my birth date. So I'm going to put in my birth date information here. So just by the way this is scrolling, I'm going to give away, be giving away my age here. And uh, put my information in there. Actually, I'm just going to make one up there. And then uh, now the terms and conditions. And I need to agree to those things. And so I'm going to agree. Click Agree again to walk through that. And uh, now it says it has a, a problem updating, uh, creating a new Apple ID. So obviously whatever I put in didn't take. I'm just going to click Continue. That's something that I can update later. Normally if you just put that in right, everything's good to go. Uh, I'm just going to change it. Now you create your computer account. And so what you want to do is put in your full name. Um, so whatever that is, so put in your full name, your account name, your password, and you're going to put in a password hint. So I'm going to type in all of that uh, information here. I'm just going to make some stuff up so that uh, I can just show you how this install process goes. You can even put a photo in there if you want to. Type in my uh, password here, and then I'm going to verify it and get that in there. Okay. And then uh, I can, I'm going to require a, a password when logging in. you got to put in a hint or otherwise it won't let you through there. I'm going to click Continue. And it's going to go and start creating my account now. This is my main account. Now I've got to click uh, the, si the time zone that I'm in. Since I'm in that uh, general time zone there, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it where it is at the default. Uh, and now you can register your Mac. And I not this isn't a new Mac. I don't need to register. I'm just going to skip this step. Ask me if I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. And now it says, thank you, you're done. And I just click start using my Mac and everything should be configured for me. It should take me right into my desktop. Okay, once you've installed Mountain Lion, you're taken to your desktop. You can see you've got a different wallpaper there and you know that you have now done a clean install of Mountain Lion and everything looks great. You can see your desktop here and everything is ready to go. Next, what you want to do to get Lion Server going is going to the App Store and you want to pull up the screen there for OS X Server. You'll notice it doesn't say Mountain Lion Server, it's just Server now because Apple's changed the branding on that. You can see it says Installed for me. Uh, it'll say probably $19.99 for you to be able to download it, but you want to go and actually download OS X Server uh, to your computer so that you have it available and ready to install because we've got to install that now on top of our Mountain Lion install. And so if I uh, just pull up the Applications folder here, you'll see once you've downloaded it, it's right there in your Applications folder. If you double click on it, you'll come up with your setting up your server. And let me just put these things down here so we've got this. So it tells you here you are ready to set up your OS X server. So you just click the Continue button. You need to agree to the licensing terms. We click Agree there. Now you need to authenticate to make sure that you do agree with it. You click Allow. And now it's going to go and start to configure the things it needs to set up Mountain Lion Server for you. And so whenever you see that spinning uh, beach ball there, you know that this install process is underway and that it's getting the things it needs. Now, it takes you to this nice screen that says Accessing Your Server. And this replaces really the setting up the domain name stuff that we've had in the past. And so you'll notice they have different things that you can take a look at here in terms of setting up your server. You've got a local network, a local network using and using VPN, and a domain name. The local network is there for .local type addresses. That's if you only want people inside your network to access it. Local network and using VPN allows you to have a private network. So you want to use .private where you can then VPN into your network uh, if you want to so that you have the ability uh, to have people have a secure connection into your network to make those things connect. And so that's why you would have this VPN that's uh, that's on there. And you'd want to use a dot .private address, okay, not just a dot .local one. That'll allow you to access that more easily, and that works with VPN. And then you also have, uh, if you notice under uh, underneath it, there's a dot .private. If you look underneath it, you have your domain name. And that, uh, as we've talked about before, is where you would set up your registered domain name. So if you were out uh, on the internet, you set up your own uh, domain name, uh, something like uh, server.example.com, you would do that. So I'm going to use that for my setup here. Now you want to go and do connecting to your server. You want to come up with a computer name, your host name, and all of that. I'm going to type in a generic name, Todd's Server. 
uh, let me just put that in there uh, that you'd have that uh, your host name and that's whatever your host name is again if it's uh, you know server.joe.com or if it's uh, joe.private or joe.local whatever that is whatever you've chosen to set up on that first screen this is the host name that you want to put in here and it's important that you put in uh, an accurate host name for whatever you put in on that last screen again whether it's .com or whatever so I'm gonna put mine in here and I'm gonna use a .com for my purposes now you'll notice here it says network address and you see that I'm on Wi-Fi here and so that's because I'm using this for the example if you click edit it'll take you into your uh, network configuration screen here and you can see that I don't have an Ethernet connected I'm just on Wi-Fi because I'm just showing you how to set this up I'm not actually setting up uh, my real server here I want to show you what a clean install looks like that's why it just says I'm on Wi-Fi uh, and you'll also notice that uh, all this other information here you can put in your DNS servers those kinds of things but I'm gonna cancel this and show you how to set that up in another screencast so next we're gonna click continue and now you can see we have airport management so it's gonna set up our Apple router right away if you've got a router now I happen to have an Apple router on this particular network that I could use you would just put in your admin password and it would set it up for you uh, in this case because I'm just gonna show you how this works and what it looks like uh, I'm not going to uh, actually set this particular thing up so I'm gonna uncheck this and just click continue now here you can put in your Apple push notifications by putting your Apple ID and password this used to be something you had to do in profile manager before but now you can do it right here in the setup area and it's kinda neat that they allow you to set it up this way uh, so you can put in your information there you just type in your Apple ID name and your password and it'll set up the certificate you need for push notifications now I'm not gonna do that because I've already got it set up this is just for example so I'm just gonna click continue and now it goes out and starts configuring our services for our server and you'll notice it's telling us every bit along the way what it's doing it's creating SharePoints it's uh, enabling AutoBuddy and group folders for local accounts it tells you all along the way the different things that it's setting up it's configuring creating certificates identity certificates it's different things like that which is kind of nice it doesn't leave you in the dark so I'm gonna let it go ahead and configure this and I will come back and we will show you what it looks like when it's done configuring okay once everything has been configured you get this great congratulations screen it says that your server has now been successfully configured now you just want to click finish and now it's going to launch us into the server application and this looks very similar to what we've seen in Lion Server it's basically the same server app with some different tweaks and differences in the way things are laid out on the sidebar as you can already see just by looking at it so what we'll do is I will cover those things in a future screencast but for now that at least shows you how to make a clean install of Lion Server so that's all I have for this week I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac